I realized when I was tightening those chains over there, I didn't really explain what that was, but on the outside there, there's some roller chains that drive the auger on uh, both sides. And they're just something you kind of got attention every once in a while, just because roller chains will tend to stretch over time. So that's what I was doing there. You don't want to stay around two or two and a half. Well, and this down stuff too is fine. Sometimes I don't know whether it's bad or not, but on some of our side hills, we really don't need an auger. All we need is like a trap door, and the corn would just slide out into the cart, really. But I guess for those few moments that we're on level ground, we better keep the auger in. In case you guys are wondering what a fuel service outfit should look like, it should look like this right there. Comes out to the field, fills up every piece of equipment, then he fills our thousand gallon uh, portable tank. Just saves us so much time. So this is kind of how to tell that you're on a fairly steep pivot. If you don't want to believe me, let's see what the roll angle has to say, pitch angle. You'd be able to fill Steve from It's 724 on Thursday evening right now and we're the elevator closed at 7 and right now we're waiting for trucks to come back so we can load them for overnight then we'll fill the carts tarp them and then we'll get out of here so we'll be out of here in, uh, might be an hour or so it just depends on how fast we can get it done but no I got I got a question from a viewer which I, I kind of want to start out saying I like questions from you guys because I, I, I really want to help you guys understand what we're doing out here and to, um, you know, especially for non-farmers, to help you just see what's going out here on a, on a corn and soybean operation and to just answer questions for you guys. So I love the questions. Keep them coming. Uh, and if you have follow-up questions after this, just, just go ahead and ask them in the comments below. But um, this question was, how many acres do you figure per combine on average? And so... Um, I'm just going to start out saying it depends, and the reason why I say that is um, operations are are as different as people. I mean, everybody's different in what they think and how fast they want to get done. Different people are more efficient than other people, and so uh, also another factor is you know some some guys, a lot of the guys in our area have cow calf operations, so they got such a limited window and how fast they can get stuff done in our area. So that might be a factor in what they they choose on how many combines to run or, or, or what combine to run, what size of combine. And that makes a difference too, is the size of combines. Um, and so another thing too is, you know, we kind of farm in the hills and I know that slows us down a little bit because when we run in our flat ground, we can, we can cover the acres a lot faster than we do when we get in our steeper hills. And so, that's a factor too. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of starting out trying to list all these factors. A lot, you know, cost. You know, adding an extra machine is a huge cost too. Um, so you kind of hope to justify that. Plus, labor is a huge issue in our area. So you got to have the labor to uh, be able to keep corn away from that those machines. And so that's that's something that guys got to think about as well. And uh, labor is hard to come by now, and so that's that's kind of something we we always struggle with too. Is um, you know just uh, keeping corn away from two machines, but we ultimately still land on running two machines because we feel that's what gets it done. That's what gets harvest done in a timely manner, which is also another factor. Is can you get your crops out? You know, kind of in a set maybe a six week window or a seven week window, whatever kind of window you hope to get it out in. So um, to kind of throw out maybe an average number of what is kind of average maybe in our area, I would say 1,500 to 2,500 acres, uh, maybe 3,000 or so, 15 to 3,000. I know that's kind of a range there, but um, I know guys that maybe run one machine over, they might have two machines, they run them over 10,000 acres. And so, you know, they're all across the board there. I've seen them, and, and they're all good operations. And so, um, 
It, it, it ultimately depends, and so that, that's how I'm going to answer that, I guess. And hopefully that makes sense, and I, hopefully I cleared that up. So if you actually put a set number, um, I don't know if you can, actually. So, um, But, uh, no, that's how I'd answer that anyway. And, yeah, keep the questions coming, guys. I really appreciate it. has the best sunrises in the solar verse. It's a proven fact. We've called Pluto. So my uh, grain tang auger, I knew it was wearing thin. It's something I was going to watch throughout the year. I thought I'd maybe be able to get by with it, but um, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace it because it's getting pretty paper thin on the end. So this is what it is. Hopefully I can just swap it out real quick. I've done it before in the shop, but um, it's just a few bolts, but let's see how it goes. I didn't get my corn all cleaned out last night. It wasn't enough room. Hopefully it'll turn on and work without any hiccups. So it's whatever one of you yahoos took my 13 and my, oh, never mind, I got the 24. <laughs> it's in my pocket. 13, need it back. All right, here it goes. knocking we're gonna call it good good enough for horseshoes anyway let's light this candle for today dusty so another question that I, I kind of got is you know the fragility of these machines that's a word I guess fragility you know when I was fixing that clean grain elevator chain in my last video and also the auger on this one now you'll probably be wondering um, this this is a 2017 model, so this is going into its third season. Uh, we bought it a year old. Um, the farmer before that runs it through a lot of acres as well, and so out here in corn and soybean country, you know, corn yields roughly 200 to 220 bushel an acre to 250, just depending on what field you're in. Um, that's a lot of bushels being cranked through the machine, also soybeans as well, and so you figure this machine. You know, over the last farmer and what we've already ran into, it's probably already got over, well over a million bushels, if not, you know, uh, maybe to that 1.5 million bushel ranges. So 
Um, we buy them to use them. We, we crank the bushels through them. And so that's a lot of wear on those chains and that's a lot of wear on the augers and, and belts. And so, um, you know, they're high maintenance machines just because of the, the sheer volume of bushels we crank through these machines. And, and this is a 2017 S670 combine and my brother's over there is a 2018. S770, so um, you know it's it's important to keep them well maintained because you know they're all kind of linked together. It's kind of like the human body; you kind of got one bad thing can kind of weaken the other thing. Say you got a bad hip, well that can weaken the other hip. It's just kind of like that on it's kind of like that on a combine. You know, you got an auger that's wore out; it's going to put more pressure on what's ever pushing it to that auger. And so um, just trying to keep everything up to shape uh, is kind of important so that's kind of one of the reasons why I fixed that auger. The John Deere mechanic said it, it was iffy so I kind of knew going into the year that it could be so after I evaluated it the other day I was just like well I'm, I'm going to replace it so I ordered one online they sent it out I got it yesterday I put it in this morning before the trucks got here so Hopefully it keep things rolling and hopefully just to keep things running hopefully as efficiently as this machine was designed to run. So. signals with um, uh, cell service so this is actually a cell booster I set my phone in and it runs it's got an amplifier I sit behind the seat and it goes out and it's got an antenna on the roof and it helps quite a bit it, it won't pick up if, you, if there's just no if there's no cell service in the area it won't help but I mean if you still got a little bit it'll help boost it how I can imagine it, it's about like if you were to get out of your cab and stand on the top of the very machine is, is how much it helps. So you might pick up a bar or two, but a lot of times that's enough to get get the service out. But what this does is allow me to just talk on the phone because communication, there's a lot of things going on during harvest and just with uh, uh, people we work with and, and things that we got going on just helps keep me if I have to hold it to my ear and not have good cell service all the time it just makes me less efficient harvesting so um, what that is is a wee boost it used to be Wilson it used to be called because I, I, I bought one for our shop and so it used to be Wilson was the company but um, you know that works really well my brother actually has one I bought for him his is wireless it'll actually pick up you know it'll kind of fill the cab up it's a wireless booster but um, I had one just like it, but it actually went bad for some reason here a couple years ago, so I just replaced it with this less expensive one, and it works well this way. Yeah, I know I got the goofy earbuds in, but these things are handy because I just tap them to make a call, and I tell it who to call, and it works really well, so if you see that in my videos and think I look like a dork, so be it. It's just handier as I'll get out. We got Dan running the car today. Well, the guys just, oh, he retired a few years ago. They're darn good help, though. They, they're the ones that kind of step up. They work well for seasonal help because they don't really want a full-time job, but yet they're still pretty valuable. They're, they like running machines and stuff, so uh, this works out well for them, so we really appreciate those guys. Get back to the earbuds. If you guys are trying to talk your wives into uh, spending the money for something, just tell them it's, it's so I can have better better cell phone conversations with you, honey, during harvest. That sounds good. Let's go with that. Got trucks pulling in and out of the field here. Sometimes you hit that gap just right, and there's always a little bit of time of waiting, but they're hauling. We got about, we got six trucks, and they're hauling a 
35 mile trip, 40 mile trip maybe, one way. So it takes a little time for them to make a round trip. So that's how we're hauling today anyway. But this this field's really far north. This is our four far northeast field. So uh, it's a little bit further to drive compared to our other ones where it's more like a 20 mile drive or 15 to 20 mile drive, just depending on where we're at. 49, no. station you're gonna see farmer stuff. good guy or, or are you the bad guy no, I'm the, bad guys. the bad guys are gonna get you That was kind of lightning to the south of us, but no, that's going to do it for this uh, episode of O'Neill Family Farms. So, uh, yeah, like, subscribe. It actually does help us out, I think. Uh, I know you probably hear it all the time, but uh, if you feel led to, just hit that like button or, or, or just smash it So, uh, in, in hatred of me. Whatever you got to do. Thank you. So, we'll catch you guys later. Bye.